So hi, hello and welcome again. Microbe Hunter here. Well, I'm right now in the forest, as you can see. And next to me, a plant that you do not want to touch. It's a so-called stinging nettle. And it's called like that because it really hurts your fingers when you touch it. And uh, what I want to do is, is I want to now take it home and I would like to put it under the microscope to find out why it actually hurts your fingers when you touch it. Well, what's actually going on? Well, I think the microscope is able to answer this question. I mean, it's a pretty beautiful place here. Stinging nettles like to grow um, in the shadow, um, also where the moisture is a little bit higher um, in the ground. And uh, right here um, on the side of the forest, uh, there are plenty of them growing over there. A little bit difficult to reach uh, because the grass is so high and I do not want to catch any ticks. Uh, but you know what, um, I'm quite lucky here because there is one right next, uh, right next to me. Stinging nettles and cats, <laughs> yes, cats, uh, those animals, have a very funny uh, thing in, in common. Um, both of them only like one way of being stroked. If you stroke a cat uh, from the head towards its tail, the cat's gonna be all fine, it's gonna like it. Um, and uh, if you stroke it the other way, the cat's gonna start biting you. And a stinging nettle does something similar, because if you stroke the stinging nettle's leaves from the stem towards the tip of the leaves, nothing's gonna happen. But if you move your fingers into the opposite direction, if you stroke the leaves from the tips towards the stem, well then it's going to hurt you quite a bit. So I would like to find out what, what happens here on, on a microscopic level. Well, to get the plant, I'm just going to use my uh, dissecting scissors. I think I, I think I must have accidentally touched it because uh, my arm is not hurting a little bit, but that'll go away. Now putting the stinging nettle under the microscope is really not a difficult thing because I'm using my stereo microscope and absolutely no specimen preparation is necessary. And already after the first few seconds I was able to see the reason why you're able to stroke over the leaves in one direction only. And that is because the leaf is covered with tiny spikes which are all pointing into one direction. And uh, over here I'm using my toothpick now to try to move uh, those spikes and um, yeah they are quite sharp and also quite rigid so they're pretty solid and this is a little aphid that I found and it's also enjoying its uh, time on the leaf here. Now here the spikes can also be seen on the stem itself. Here the contrast is a little bit bad, better because of the black background. But uh, when you move those spikes and if you're lucky you're able to see that there are tiny droplets appearing from the tip uh, of uh, the spikes. And uh, these tiny droplets, uh, like you're going to see over here, um, contain formic acid and also other chemical substances which irritate uh, the skin. And that's actually the reason why the a stinging nettle actually hurts when you touch it uh, because uh, this liquid is injected uh, into your skin. I'm now trying to use my tweezers uh, to remove one of those uh, tiny spikes. Uh, yes, and over here again our little friend the aphid who's trying to remind you to please like and subscribe uh, to this video and to this YouTube channel if you like these videos. Now and this is how it looks like under the compound microscope. I think it's a very beautiful structure but you can also see that there are air bubbles in the middle and this is because the spike is hollow because it is filled with this substance which is so irritating to your skin. Now that we have uncovered the mystery of the stinging nettle, I would like uh, to say uh, thank you for watching. I would like to invite you, of course, to subscribe to this channel. I hope that you liked this video here. Happy microbe hunting as always. Uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.